I am Red Cyclone! Aria! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to another episode of the It Gets Better Square Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Beans, and I'm here with Merc with the mic. What is going on, world? Chillin', chillin', Merc. How you doing? It was good. Um, I went to a retro arcade um, spot. So, um, if you listen to our cast or even our um, Game of Rage cast, we always shout out this video game store called Game, game On. That's in Long Island. Uh, they have places in uh, Miller Place and Smithtown. Um, so they ha- once they opened at their location, they made a retro arcade in a great, uh, Smith Haven Mall in Long Island. Okay. And um, it's all original consoles. It's all original arcade machines. And it's not like a bootleg. No, they're all original, original arcades. It has probably a good almost 100 machines in there. Plus mm-hmm. consoles on the wall. You also have consoles in the corners that you can just jump and play. Uh, I think it was twenty bucks for adults, ten dollars for kids, and you could play all day. Like you could go eat, go shopping, come back, play, go out, come back, play, and um, everything start and play. Is not there's no like charges on the machines or anything like that. Nice. It was really cool, and it's something unique. And um, if you're ever in that area, uh, Smith Haven Mall, uh, check it out. It's really nice. It's really cool. It's, it's fun for the family. It's uh, it's made for family, so have your have, bring your family there. It's a lot of fun. Okay, I Good really enjoyed stuff. it. It was cool. Good stuff. Um, and it's like it's nice seeing arcades like back in in a way, you know. Yeah, I mean, at least they understand. Yeah. And teach your kids about arcades because arcades were great. Yes, sir. Uh, they had this cool uh, Ninja Turtle arcade, uh, Ninja, Ninja Turtle pinball machine. It was a brand new like, Ninja Turtle pinball machine. I think that, the, that that machine itself was created maybe two years ago. Makes sense. And um, it's like all today. It was actually really cool. I was actually I played that for a bit. I actually have a picture on it on my Instagram. I'm like with the mic. Uh, so check that out. Good, good. But yeah, that's what's up. We went there yesterday uh, for Tommy's birthday. Uh, to, shout out to Nation T. Happy birthday. Prick. <laughs> Happy birthday from the Red Cyclone. Yes. Oh yeah. We'll find you birthday punches next. Anyway, um, but yeah, we saw that. Um, I saw the Batman. Um, that was actually extremely excellent movie. I recommend anyone to go watch it. It was it surprised the shit out of me, so I'm very happy with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I just been playing Horizon, so that's my like up to date thing. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Good stuff. And wrestling. Lots of wrestling. Yeah. The one yes, thing sir. I forgot to mention on the Wrestling Babble was the Vince McMahon um, conversation. Oh, with Pat McAfee? Yes. Yeah. That was really good. Uh, I did not sit down and watch it myself, but I, I definitely have to do that. Now they actually have it on it that is to go straight to the interview because it's like a four hour show. So mm-hmm. they actually have it ready to go straight to the interview. It's actually a really good interview. Very insightful. Very interesting in how he thinks and like that and how he presents himself and stuff like that. So I actually really enjoyed the conversation. Um, I, I suggest if you can find an audio version and listen to the audio version because Vic Man is very low when he talks. So you're mm-hmm. going to be adjusting your volume back and forth quite a couple times. Okay. Gotcha. So um, uh, Josh from uh, Minion, he recommended listening to the audio one because it was easier to listen. Is that like on Pat McAfee? Does he have a, a Spotify? Or yeah, some type I think he has a Spotify. All right, cool. I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So not much. Uh, it's been a it's been a slow week. Um, I'm kind of like saving money because uh, Yusagi Jimbo goes on pre-order on the eighth. Gotcha. With the neutrinos, so I might have to pre-order them. I know you mentioned in the Wrestling Babble that they released a bunch of wrestling for you. Oh yeah. Recently. Corazon de Leon. A.K.A. a very young Chris Jericho. Very young. In Mexico. Very so. young. 
That's cool. Yeah, and they also announced that they are doing their own version of the Ultimate line, which is going to be called the uh, Supreme. And mm-hmm. they show they showed four people they're going to be in it. Uh, the first two are going to be Omega and and Black. Was that Kenny Omega? You said Kenny Omega and Malachi Black. Okay. And gotcha. I think Cody and there's another one. I keep bringing it up. And I can't keep forgetting. I think Cody is in the second rave, and I don't think they didn't show the other person. Gotcha. Understood. But most likely Cody is going to be in that second wave. It makes sense that Cody is in the second wave. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it does. Because he has all those crazy outfits. Shit, it's going to be like that. Um, whole land, Homelander outfit. That's cool. Yeah. Um, other than that, not much. How's all the ring treating you? As badly as it should be. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. They told you it was going to be fun. Yeah, but they didn't tell you about how many times you was going to get hit in the head on the way to having that fun. So that's exactly what's going on. That game is, the game is, is what was advertised. Uh, gigantic World. It's got a main quest that you yep. can follow, right? Mm-hmm. But you're not going to do that. So it it's just been fun. The main thing I think that's fun about the game is, again, because so many people are playing it and the way the world is now that you can watch so many different so many different people play it yeah um and you can hear people's um experiences yeah that you can hear how different so many people starting the game was and i think that's lost on a lot of games nowadays because they're so rigid and at least the, the opening hours getting you through the tutorials yeah almost everybody has the exact same experience for like the same four or five hours in the beginning and it's cool that from minute one once you finish the the intro movie you could choose to not do the tutorial yeah you could choose to just go a different way and maybe you're going to get your ass kicked the whole time maybe not who knows so that's kind of what i like about this well not kind of that's that's a, a lot of what i like about the game is the fact that it's actually open world and it's actually open-ended because the last thing to do ends up usually being the main quest. So okay. I have I actually haven't found a spot like when you're when you're searching through the map for things to like uncover, there's something almost everywhere. Or there there's like a reason for you to be in a certain spot of the map. Like maybe it won't activate now. Maybe you have to kill somebody. Somebody else. Maybe you gotta kill some sorcerer who's he's projecting a force field, right? And yeah. saying the door that won't open, and you you don't know that. Yeah. You're like, huh? I found the door and it won't open. There's this blue light. Why won't it open? And then maybe you go somewhere else and kill you kill a boss, and it turns out. And then you go, oh yeah, that that sorcerer that I killed that opened the gate. I should go back there. And you know what? If you go back there, it might be open. Yeah. Cool. But the thing I don't, uh, not that I don't like what I was saying before, was that I had to change how I played the game. Mm-hmm. Because I would do things in the game and not mark it on the map. Because the map, it, the game does not hold your hand at all. Oh. So an NPC does not show up on the map. You, it is your duty to mark down where the NPCs in the world are. Because some of them move right mm-hmm. but also the actual in-game world is so big it's very easy to lose them uh, and that's happened to me so i made sure to start actually using the tools that the game gives me and it, that that's one of the things that i have to applaud the game for is that most of the time if you're getting your ass beat or you you're lost it's your fault because Number one, the game encourages you to not stand there and fight the same enemies that are killing you, okay. but but to go experiment, go somewhere else, and maybe try, maybe switch up your build, right? Yeah. Because at some point they give you the ability to respec, and they give you items to do it, and it's like, take advantage. There's, I think one of the the, the number one things that people that have a hard time with this game, uh, do. Is think that they have to play by some sort of arbitrary rule set. They think, oh, we got, I gotta be the big boys. 
I have to roll through everything. I have to min max and do. Oh, well, you can make mistakes <laughs> and have a crappy build, and yeah. then just fix it. They let you fix it. Cool. Yeah, that's just what it is. Like you could start off using magic and then be like. Uh, I don't like getting killed in one hit by everything. So how about I make myself a, a sturdy boy? And yeah. you know what? Make yourself sturdy. Be, be able to tank hits. And maybe that would be the way the game uh, opens up for you. So I, I, I think that the game it, it succeeds because it is letting you do the things that you want. And a lot of games just pretend that they let you do. Yeah. But they still hold you to a lot of rules and hold your hand a lot of the way. And I think a lot of people for, like this game reminds me again. Remember how I don't know if, I, if you remember when I told you why I like the original Dark Souls is because it reminds me of like the the original Legend of Zelda. Yeah, this more reminds me of the original Legend of Zelda. Okay, they don't yeah. Do nothing. Yeah. The, the old man says, "Take this. It's dangerous to go alone." That's it. And good luck. Good luck. And that's kind of how it is. That's so, good. I like that. Cool. And this game lives up to that. I would. I'm curious about Breath of the Wild too now. Yeah. Because I just I kind of want that formula because I missed the first one. So yeah. I might go. I, I have a Switch. I should play it. Yeah, you should play it. I should play it. It I, is something I, that I, will I, take a lot of time. Yeah, I know, but it, I just like the the, the freedom. That's, yeah. So that's that's kind of what I think of this game. It has in common, yeah. is modern, and it has that freedom. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Like I, I think one thing with the Breath of the Wild that does too is it makes you experiment with a lot of shit. Yeah. Like you yes. see people make a car out of like a wheel in a in a in a, in a brick mm-hmm. and shit like that, and mm-hmm. this, they you just see them rolling around. And you're like, how? Who would yeah. think this? <laughs> but I mean, yeah. they also let you shoot shoot Link across the map. Yeah. If you know if you know how to use the physics properly, so mm-hmm. like, that's just what that game do. And I yeah. think, although not to that extreme, right? Yeah. This game kind of lets you do a lot of that stuff. It lets you beat certain enemies because on the open world, there's no tether, there's no boundary in a visible wall that holds you in an arena when you're on the the map. Yeah. So you can do all types of stuff to the bosses that you do fight outside. And that's and, and all the regular enemies, and I think that's one of the best parts of the game. It's like you know what, you can't jump that high. <laughs> I got a horse that could double jump. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stand on this rock and I'm gonna hit you in the head because you can't double you can't double jump. And hey, it's cheap, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> so good, good. Like at one point, I kind of felt bad because I was standing there shooting arrows at something. I was like, man, this is cheap. But guess what? If I stood next to him, he would beat my ass. <laughs> so I'm a beachy. So that's yeah. it. Cool. It sounds like a fun game. It sounds like something interesting. And like I, again, I, I guess you learn little by little what gameplay will fit you too. Probably mm-hmm. really fast too. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you'll just fight something and you'd be like, I don't even know what happened. Why am I dead? <laughs> yeah. But. It, Cause you know what, it it maybe it's maybe it's it's the fault of a lot of games of today for not. Mm, this game makes you learn patterns okay. of the bosses. Some games, it's a suggestion to learn the pattern because you could just hit the boss and then still die. Yeah, you can do like an uh, you can do basically the bare minimum, and you can beat the boss, right? Yeah. In this game, there are just some bosses where you. It's not that it makes you play by the rules. It's just that you have certain openings, and if you do not know exactly when there's an opening, you can't do what you need to do to get your damage in. Yeah, like you can do your damage any way you want, whether it be a knife, a, a sword, magic, a lightning bolt. But if you try to just willy nilly go, I'm just gonna do what I want, nah. Yeah. Nah, son. some of them some of them there are some bosses where there's videos out there of people showing how, how overpowered magic can get the thing is people don't realize that's not beginner magic yeah and people are like oh my god i can't believe how easy that is. no you 
you try that on certain bosses and you just be like, this doesn't work. I thought it was easy. Because, <laughs> nice. so, no, there, there's, again, I like a game that doesn't have everything be uniform. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that this game, not everything is uniform. That's you can do some things to some people, not everybody. And that's cool. That's cool. That is cool. Um, I've been playing. Uh, I'm still on Horizon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I fought an elephant. It was humongous. It chased me. Was it fun? Like, yeah, it, it, it's like a like it, it's a mission to like destroy these things, especially if you don't have the like me. I I, I try my best to find places to like kind of hide, so mm-hmm. I could get an advantage and vantage point because sometimes they just charge at you. Relentless. They don't give a fuck what's in front of them. They'll charge at you. Gotcha. They'll break walls. They'll break. They'll break trees. They they gonna get you. They gonna try to find to get you, and they gonna get you. So it was kind of cool, just because the, the how massive it looked and shit for like mm-hmm. the game itself, and it's it's still it's a humongous game. I'm going to do it little by little, but I may have maybe like at least 24 hours in now. Okay, and how okay. about the story wise? Um, it? I'm probably like maybe 30 percent or 40 percent. I, I I get distracted with the side stories and stuff. I get to the point where I have to go do the story because I'm missing things. I'm missing like pieces that I need throughout the that you get in the storyline to get into other places so that's when i'll go back and like all right i gotta go to the story again because i need this piece or i need this piece okay that's yeah. cool but it's really good what it's is really it fun. is it have you found it like as in in your 24 hours of the gameplay yeah have, have you found this to be like are you seeing this being a favorite of yours like what they've given you like do you do you are you are you getting the feeling like oh man they've really outdone themselves with this horizon formula or yeah. do you feel like it's too similar to the first one or do you feel like it's just right like well, how, how you feel about i think it it, went, I, I think they so did far? a good job in like recapturing what the first one did mm-hmm. um the story I, i'll say the story doesn't have the depth the first one did but okay. it's getting there. Like again, I'm not that far into it to like really tell you the, exactly where the story's going. But it could be it, it could be boring at times. But it's more the side missions and stuff are a bit more fun. I think the missions that you get on the side, uh, the side so far have been more fun than the actual misses, missions themselves. Um, just the discovery and just like playing around with the mechanics of the game and just like once you get unlocked like the shield that you could glide with. It makes mm-hmm. it a lot easier to get around because you just go pick up, pick up the highest thing and just glide from that from to the next place and stuff like that. I'm mean, just saying, the Breath of the Wild taught yeah. people things. Yeah, and it's crazy because the first game came out the same day as Breath of the Wild or the same week. Yeah, and there and was, it, somebody had mentioned that there was like that game and one other big, big, big game that came out around the exact same time. Like there were three really big games. Yeah, I think and it was the Resident level. Evil. Was it Resident Evil Seven? I think it was two. Oh, remake. Yes. No, no, it no, wasn't, it wasn't that, that. It was two thousand seven. It came out twenty seventeen. Yeah, two was two. Two remake, I think, was more recent. I think that was twenty like eighteen or nineteen, yeah. right? Twenty seventeen games. Uh... Yeah, it was Biohazard. Was Biohazard? Oh, it was. It was Biohazard. Uh, Resident Evil Seven, Seven and Near Near, uh, and that's I'm, the other one. That was the I'm other one that out. came out. They all came okay. out within the same time period. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, 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 that was the issue. So I I lined up staying with Horizon, and I took a break off of Breath of the Wild because I wasn't playing. Like, the only time I played my Switch was on the go anyway. So I was like, you know what, that'll be my game on the go. But they were too similar to each other that I had to stop one. Yeah, I understand. I understand. So I went with Horizon because I was further into that one than I was in Breath of the Wild. Okay. okay. And yeah, I liked them both. They were both good. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's a good game. It's fun. Um, it's beautiful. It's very visually beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, I I think Aloy is kind of a boring character, but I think the side characters and everyone around her makes it makes her more interesting. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Other than that, yeah, it's a great game. Um. I saw Gran Turismo Seven came out. And I saw some like gameplay, and that game looks crazy yeah. real. But I would not play it. Yeah, I like how it looks. It, I like I like a lot of the 
the small options I saw, yeah, people were streaming it, and they like the decals and the, the customization options yeah. and the tracks and like even the music in that game is really really good. Yeah, but it's not for me because it's simulation racing. I, yeah, that's, I don't like that. Like they they want you with, with like freaking steering wheel and. The pedal is there a PS? Clutch. Is there a PS? There's not a. There, there can't be right. A PS5 wheel. I bet there are. I bet a hundred percent think there is. Especially when Gran Turismo came out, I bet you they made one, particularly for that. They usually do, don't they? Yeah. Because hmm. a lot of people like hmm. act, the actual simulation of the racing. Hmm. I wonder yeah. if she, I wonder if they made one. You need like a whole shell. I know people that will buy like purchase the whole freaking shell. Well, I've seen custom uh, setups. I believe at one point Giant Bomb was going was going through like they made a, a little one, like a desk mounted one, yeah. which I thought was cool because they also used it for um, flight sounds. Yeah. yeah. And oh, well, like there's stuff like that I've seen. There's the the real ridiculous ones where you can sit in it. I've seen that stuff, but yeah. you know that's a little too crazy. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm just glad it's good. Yeah. I'm glad people are uh, happy to get it because that's a that's like a once a generation type of game, man. Yeah, it's not like Forza. Forza comes in like every two years. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, it's as pretty as Forza. Forza is a fucking beautiful game. But uh, I think Xbox found a way to get that like every other year because they got Horizon that comes out in between. This is more than arcade. They're, they're different, yeah. A different version of. Yeah. Okay. They have okay. Forza Motorsports, which is their their serious one, and then the arcade one is the Horizon. Okay, gotcha. But yeah, like I'm watching oh. someone play now, and like just the technique, the, the freaking technical shit up with the wheels. Like you need these wheels, you need this engine, you need this, you need that. Like I, that's too much for me. I'm, I'm already like, yeah, that's that's way too much for me. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't give a damn about the the, the brake pads and which brake pads i need like all that stuff would be fine if i liked how it felt to yeah. drive the cars but it takes uh so much time and control yeah to play that game properly yeah like i remember the license test that you had to do on oh, like car two and you know that's how you get the better cars and i was stuck with like the little realistic person cars and not the supercars and that made me not want to play the game because I looked at the cover of the game yeah. and it was this cool ass car and I'm like, why do I have a real person car? Like it why sucks. I got why I gotta drive this Gremlin? I want that yeah. Ford GT. <laughs> I want the I want the Viper or yeah. I want the the GT or, what, or I want this Lamborghini like yeah. or, you know pseudo Lamborghini no. whatever. But you get this minivan. Yeah, <laughs> get a, get a, get an A on your license test and you can drive this yeah. uh, Miata this Honda. <laughs> whatever you know it's this toyota i'm like this sucks i'm not doing this so yeah not yeah. for me so yeah um that came out and then you also got wwe coming out like later this week and it looks like so far from what i've seen so far it looks like it's going in the right direction all i can say is i hope so me i too. don't i don't root for these games to fail i want them to have a good one me too. I, I miss rest, I miss playing wrestling games. Yeah, and wow. yeah, I made a terrible one last two years ago. So yeah, they ran the people into the ground, and that's what they get. Yeah, two K nineteen. Thank you for your for your hard work and them keeping the servers on that game because they needed that. Oh yeah, they that's had good. to. They had no choice but to keep the servers on. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And also, Fire Pro Wrestling kind of helped in, in between the thing too. If you like wanted a wrestling game, but it was there and it was cheap, and you was able to get that game for like ten, fifteen dollars with all the DLC, you could get like for, for twenty five dollars. Okay, so that's cool. There you go. Um, yeah, that's not a lot. Um, I got Usagi Ojimbo coming out on Tuesday. I got to pre-order that. Oh, that's actually like they put a date. So yeah, yeah, March eighth. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's gonna be up for like two weeks. Okay, that's cool. It's the cartoon Usagi, and um, yeah, I I gotta get him. 
the, the, the neutrinos I, don't, I I'm not really like keen for I could actually pass that on one up if I I, I I really don't never really care for those characters and they don't have the car like if, if they had the car then it would be different but there's no car so okay okay but uh Usagi is a must a must but yeah but that's all I got gotcha, gotcha. you want to get into this movie yes sir yes sir so this week of our it, wait is, is this still counts right yeah okay so we've got two decades of movies comic book and superhero related theatrical only we tried uh, we have crow the crow salvation let's just say the yep, entire yep. title the crow salvation um this is 2000 yep it is radio r and it is an hour and 42 minutes right yep uh do they have a debut information june 14th 2000 okay did it debut here first or was uh i think it debuted in europe first oh okay okay um the director is Barat Mallory. Uh, I looked through his his IMDb. I didn't see too much I saw, but I see that he has he has directed a lot of like mini series. So I see that. Yeah. Um, Writer is James O'Barr, um, and Chip Johansson. So, and I believe they are well. It says James Barr is related to the comic book series, so I, at okay. least there's some. Uh, credibility is, right yeah. so you got somebody who's involved with the, i guess at the time the current comic series yep and this movie is starring kirsten dunce as aaron ranfall yep william atherton as nathan ranfall debbie fan as barbara chin eric uh mabius as alex corvus you played uh leon in the resident evil movies The ones that we saw? Mm-hmm. Wow. That guy doesn't look like that dude. Wow. He sure did grow up. <laughs> <laughs> he had a few more years to age up, huh? Apparently. Wait, was he, he Leo? No, good. he was um he was in the first two. He's the one he's the dude that became Nemesis. Oh, so that's not Leo. No, it's not Leo. Like I'm confused. He was the guy at the end of the first movie. Yes. They took him away from Alice. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the other movie, he was, yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. All right. He was supposed to be somebody else. They turned him into Nemesis. I was like, that made no sense. But anyway, yeah. I forget. We, we already went through that. Um, what do you, so you have? Grant Shard. Shard has Peter Walsh. Uh, David Jean Thomas is Mercer. Gabriel Woods is Old Woman. Lodi Lynn O'Keefe as Laura Randall. Uh, that's about it. I mean, oh. you do have to go through the, the, the bad guys. Yeah, not really. Because I know um, the... Who, which one is the main? Did we get the main? Yeah, well, Nathan Randall. Yeah, Nathan movie, Randall. I think he's, he's, the, he's, the he's the main villain. He's yeah. the main villain. Yeah, Nathan he's Randall's the a main villain. And then also, like, the one I was at, Walton uh, Guggins. I know him for, like... He was in Justified. He was also in like Sons of Anarchy and shit. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, this goes into like, uh, all right. So every Crow movie kind of has like, uh, kind of the same, like, beginning. Someone got fucked over. Someone, some bad shit happened. They line up dying. Then they come back to revenge the death of the person that died. Or a person that they cared about died and things like that. He got put in the electric chair for that. And then when the electric chair hit, the dude fucking showed his scar. Like, haha, you're dead, motherfucker. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they, they kind of explain everything. Yeah. What he was in jail for, what ended up being the murder, the gruesome murder. The ex- Scott Steiner doesn't like it. Yeah, the gruesome it. murder of his girlfriend. Uh the funny part was the old lady telling the story on the news and yeah. it was like oh this is 
this is something else. Yeah. That's a record. 53 times? Goodness. And I was like, damn, that's messed up. So the entire city was like torn because they actually said that some people were protesting his death because yeah. they, they believed him. There was a story out about a man with a scar. Yeah. Uh, you find out right then and there, Scott Steiner. Mm-hmm. Very tough. Scott Steiner don't like the cars. He doesn't want to hear the origin story mm-hmm. but like they it's his it happens to be execution day on his birthday yeah he's turning 21 years old he uh is in prison in the opening with his his attorney playing chess yeah before he died before his execution rather um and then like the the is it the warden i believe it comes in with the birthday cake yeah and then he pulls out the candles. They like, hey, we didn't ask for that, blah blah blah. Um, but then he makes a comment, oh, we found the man with the scar. Yeah. And then he, they, they, he leaves. So that's the main through line of the movie is they're looking for the man. He is looking for the man with the scar because he believes that this is the man who really killed his girlfriend. Yeah. Um, you find it well, not clearly he's the crow. Mm-hmm. So you know his main character is going to go through something. So what ends up happening is he, they don't make it. Nope. He gets electrocuted. They, they fry him. They show it. They kill him. And I believe is it his sister that's there? There's uh, a girl in the. Uh, it's the girl uh, there. The girl's like, sister. The girl's sister. That's Kristen Dunst's character. So she's there at the execution. And sees him get like fried. And their father. Because they're there. Because they do. Th- she doesn't believe it. Yeah, like she believes that he did it. She doesn't believe him. Like when even when he comes back, yeah. like she's still confrontational and doesn't want to accept the fact that she might be wrong. Yeah. Like she's just like, no, no, there's no way. Um, I mean, it's understandable. There's no guy. Yeah, where's your proof? So I get it. Um, but what ends up happening is we get the crow comes to him because they were wrong. He was right. There needs to be justice found, and yeah. that's what the crow does. So yep. you, you get his transformation into the crow in the beginning. Yeah, a little scabby. You know. It's disgusting. Really. <laughs> it was quite disgusting. Mm-hmm. But I actually kind of dug that. I actually thought it was a cool way of having this shit on his face. It was because it, it scabbed into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was disgusting, but it, it was kind of, it looked like 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 loose bacon. So yeah, disgusting. basically. <laughs> like just um, not cooked all the way meat. Yeah, basically. And as in all cult crow movies, you kind of have then he, he's pretty much plotting his revenge. Um, he gets the list from the, his file, and that's how he finds his people, he crosses them out, and murders them. <laughs> I did like the kills, and I think that that's something that I really. I thought the kills were funny. I, I actually found humor in some of the things he did. Um, the story itself, like, it was kind of, it was really fucked up. And then the dude just showing him this card, like, ha-ha, because he thought he was never going to come back. And he was like, ha, I win, because you didn't come back. But guess what, motherfucker? I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was a decent movie. It, it was, uh... Again, if you watched One Crow, it all kind of have the a similarity to that. Um, I thought the guy, the character itself was pretty decent. Uh, Kristen Dunst was okay in the movie as well. Um, she was just really like, I don't believe shit you say. And then she started realizing that it was all coming true when he held her and made her feel everything. And that was something also a power that the crow gets is that he could transfer fucking his memories to people. That's how the first one killed uh, the main dude and shit like that. So she, he, that's the only time when she actually believed him and she actually saw everything happen. Yeah, that's true. But, um, but it's also he transferred memories from the item. Yes. So he can take the memories from the items that he yes. touches. Yeah. That's how he knew who to go get because mm-hmm. the knife yeah. was the first clue. Yeah. So once he got the knife that murdered his, his girlfriend. Yeah. He touched it and he started to see what went down and it was like it was brutal because it, it it was they should have just shot the girl yeah it's terrible 
Yeah. Oh, Scott Steiner is, is loving it today. Yeah, he's like, I'm coming for your ass. Yeah, I ain't listening to me. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh like so this one actually the other ones they were, they were able to do the same thing too. They were able to touch an item or touch a person or touch whatever has the memory of the person or whatnot. They kinda get the flashback of what was, what happened to them and stuff like that. And um it goes on throughout this movie. That's how he gets his list and that's how he goes after each one. And um it goes into all these crooked cops throughout the police station and the person that lined up being it is like the sergeant. He's like the the main the, the boss of everyone, and he's the one that had the big hand in it. And he he this this because it's not the same person. They have different uh, sayings and mannerisms yes. and things of, of being the crow. This one was chess. Yeah. So they were all pawns, kings, yep, bish, you know bishops and all that. And that was the last piece. He had to get to the king. Yep, yep. And the king ended up being because it, it was very hidden a lot of it yeah. one of the guys who who killed the girl ended up being like her father yeah like her father-in-law was in, was involved in it a, yeah. a dirty cop yeah and Kirsten Dunst didn't believe it and then once they they, they the king yeah you know the chief found that things weren't going his way and they weren't stopping the the, the guy from getting because because as the movie goes on they start dying. They start dropping because the crow's having his, you know, his glory kills, yeah, yeah. his justice kills. Yep. His but mercy kills. Slowly, they're thinning out, and they're realizing, even though they don't believe in the the resurrection aspect, because there is again, there's a supernatural, a supernatural aspect to the movie. But you re- you realize that not everybody believes in it because like you've just watched two of these movies yeah. that were filled with crazy people and then they had no problem believing in the yeah crow. this movie they don't believe in the crow yeah until he's dead in their face taking bullets to the face taking bullets to his own throat because he shoots himself in the mouth to, yeah when he like shows himself off to one of the cops mm-hmm. like that that's that's sort of different from this movie yeah like it's less it's actually less of a dark fantasy movie yeah i feel like it's like a it, but it's more like a i don't want to say just crime drama but it has a little bit of that because there's actual detective work on the yeah. coast part i also say it was a bit more humorous than the other ones he did yeah, first one wasn't that funny yeah the second he, one definitely wasn't that funny yeah. like it wasn't but they weren't going for it yeah, yeah. so this one actually had humor because the the character the the actor of the crow like yeah that was one, I guess, one of his strong suits was bringing out the humor of the cr- of like yeah. his crow. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's 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 that it is a difference. I, I I guess you could say that it is a strong suit. Yeah. Of these movies, but then again, the first one and the second one, I feel like the second one, they had the motivation of he wasn't supposed to die. Yeah. The actor wasn't supposed to die. Yeah. That they kind of that that felt like that was written for his like it was supposed to be a continuation but yeah they, they and this one is a separate thing yeah. like this one feels like okay we we're past him we're past brandon lee and we just want to make movies with the character of the crow yeah. that's what this movie felt like the yeah, second it, one did not feel like yeah it was it, this was not a sequel this was just a different story a, yes a different, a different story telling completely the crow. yeah yeah, yeah. And like that's, that's that and that's how like the next like if there if we do the next movie as well with our new list, um, it's the same thing. Like it's not a continuation; it's its own story. And that helps it. Yeah. I think that helps it. Yeah, but it was fun. It was I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't the best movie, but it was enjoyable. It wasn't like torturous to watch. It kind of went fast in a way, so I'll, I'll give yeah, it. Yeah, well, hour forty-two wasn't that long. Yeah, it was because credits and whatnot. But I think the. The genre it felt like was like a slasher flick, a slasher flick, but the slasher was the hero. Yeah. Because all the bad guys were cops. Yeah, yeah. And you know, regardless of how crooked they were, that the public doesn't know that. Yeah. So people are somebody, so somebody's just killing cops. Yep, yep. So it kind of puts a different spin on it when it's not outed that they're dirty. Yep, yep. So. Like that aspect of the movie, I actually do really like. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah so that's a. I I think overall I like it for being its own thing. Okay. Like it's in it's in the crow universe, right? Yep. 
it's not a sequel yep. but it's got those rules it's got yeah. the crow's rules yeah and you know what it takes the crow's rules and manages to make another crow and i feel like it was a, it's a good movie to watch yeah. like if you if you are a fan of the crow there's no i i say there's no reason not to watch it yeah it was you good I mean? it was a good movie better than the city of angels yeah. so if you watch just the brandon lee one and this one you'll be fine yeah yeah i think so uh so you're giving it 3.25 all right and i also gave it a 3.25 it makes your 37 and 37 37 how many times are they gonna make 30s that's so many and it makes my 30 okay all right um next movie is called the specials that sounds offensive <laughs> <laughs> i mean not offensive but that sounds like what you're saying. Um, what are you saying talking about i i think this movie was uh directed by james gunn okay so i'm actually kind of interested in what we're going to see because i was like all right james gunn did this all right i'm, I'm fine with this so we have three movies left on this list we have the specials unbreakable and x-men that's going to round gotcha. out march okay Cool. And then we'll probably relist our top movies, just go through it one more time. And then at the final episode, we'll give our whole list and we'll talk about the next list that we'll just be continuing off of. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, man. There's a lot in here. They're not, I'll tell you one thing they're not in particular order in when they came out they were more in like MCU is in order Spider-Man things are in order X-Men things are in order but when they came out they're not in order that's cool just the no year problem. they're they're not they're, the years are in order no problem yeah cause that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot of fucking movies um so yeah, yeah so specials is next week uh we have Unbreakable the following and then X-Men is gonna final be the final one of this list so right now the top tens does not change they stay the same for the second week uh so rope cop is number one for you turtles is two rope cop two is three batman's four toxic avenger five superman two is six the mass is seven men in black is eight blank man's nine blade ten for my movies it's turtles one rope cop two the mass three batman four Robocop 2 is 5, The Crow is 6, Superman 2 is 7, The Blank Man is 8, Men in Black is 9, Blade is 10. So, that is it. Let's wrap this mm-hmm. up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to the episode of the It Gets Better I Swear podcast. Make sure you follow us anywhere and everywhere. Red Cyclone That is Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. That is YouTube. That is SoundCloud. That is Spotify. And we got a WordPress. So Good check job. it out. Where you at, Merc? Follow me on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Twitch, all Merc with the Mic. Uh, stay tuned on my Instagram, Merc with the Mic. I will have a post of when we are going to be doing the Hot Ones Challenge. Me and Tenacious T are going to do the Hot Ones Challenge on Twitch. Um, you can watch us squirm and, and almost die off a of hot sauce. If you like to watch that, then uh, follow our Twitch, Merc with the Mic. And we'll be on there eating the wings of death. Nice. Um, nice. Also, Spotify. If you are listening to us on Spotify, give us a five-star rating. We need those. Get those up. Please. Do it. Thank you. I'll find you. And or we'll send the jinkies please. to get you. Huh? I said, oh, we'll send the jinkies to get oh, you. Oh, we'll send the jinkies. We will send the jinkies. Don't make us send the jinkies. Because he's going to get right. angry because he has to go over there. Mm-hmm. And then there's not going to be sandwich in sight, so he's going to nope. look at you like one. <laughs> kind of like oh, the Looney Tune cartoon when the two dudes are in the desert island and he sees the one as a hot dog and he the, the other one sees the other one as a burger. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what's going to happen. But mm-hmm. it's going to be Jinkies sees you as both. You don't want it. You're going to be a hot dog burger. You're going to do it. Run. I kind of want that now. That just sounds good. <laughs> Peace out, laters, and always remember, follow the jinkies, where he's following you. He's on gravity. <laughs>